What is the best film ever? Oh, I think it's got to be John Carpenter's Halloween. Sean is going to disagree with me on that one. I literally am like that. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? I hate horror, Lucy. Phil knows I hate horror. And so he's always like, ooh, should we watch this horror film? No, Phil, it's awful. And it's definitely not Halloween. You're mad. <laughs> Hello, I am Phil Marriott. Welcome to Flick Flop, where three cinema lovers revisit a film from the past and decide if it is a must-see movie or a total dud. So fresh from her success with her top five album. In fact, I think it was number four, wasn't it? Lucy Spragan. It was number five. So number five. That's still great. <laughs> it's still amazing. Yeah, absolutely. How are you? Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. We did an interview, I think it was about a year ago, wasn't it? When the album came out, just before the album came out. Well, the album was out in March, but we've been talking for, I think we talked when the first single came out and then when the album came out, we're like feathers now via Zoom. It just brought us close together. Yeah, yeah, in an internet sense. Mm. <laughs> Not in a physical sense. Not yet, anyway. But we have been talking about Manchester Pride, so who knows, that might happen. Sean Vickers, always good to see you ripping a much-loved movie to bits. <laughs> <laughs> wow, put that on my tombstone. <laughs> it's all you'll be remembered what for. What an accolade. So it's 51st Dates today. Now, I hadn't seen this movie before. In some ways, we might have picked the short straw because we've had some great movies on this season of Flick Flop. Have we not, Sean? Yeah. We've had some great movies and we have had some right old stinkers. <laughs> um, and so I'm intrigued to know where, where you two dropped this one. So do you want to tell us a bit about it? It's a 2004 romantic comedy starring Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler. Uh, lots of people don't like Adam Sandler. I've got to admit, in the past when I've seen him, he just irritates me a little bit. Adam Sandler plays this guy called Henry Roth. And Henry Roth lives in the Hawaiian paradise that is Hawaii and has this kind of endless like chain of lovers who are basically tourists coming in and out of town. Out of nowhere he meets this girl called Lucy and she kind of captures his heart however what he doesn't realize is that Lucy has a short-term memory loss and so when he meets her the next day she doesn't know who he is and it's the story funnily enough of 50 first dates um, mm. for Henry and Lucy to fall in love. Lucy, did it make you want to go to Hawaii when you saw this It film? did make me want to go to Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> Anywhere could be on TV at the moment and I'd be like, I need to go there. <laughs> it made me Stop want to eat thought. waffles, loads of waffles with maple syrup. Yes, me too, me too. Mm. I've got to say, Drew Barrymore, in the past, I've not always loved everything she's been in. I think she's a bit like, is it Jennifer Aniston? She's picked some duds in her career. Uh, rom Courtney rom com vibes. I, I know this, is, this sounds stupid because there's nothing like too intellectual about it but I think it was quite ahead of its time I thought it was funny and I thought it was funny now and also funny then and none of the jokes made me feel uncomfortable despite thinking they were heading in that direction that's quite a good point actually because I think a lot of films that you know were released around that time were politically incorrect and this felt like it had a kind heart in a lot of ways I think I, I thought especially with, you know, the pool assistant, he, he sort of treats her as non-binary, which I thought was really interesting yeah. for the time that he is this uh, like hetero, this straight cis white guy who's actually being how people should be now in respect to people's gender. It's, it's, I thought it was really interesting. Because he's always got some like weird gross out humour or some weird anger hostility issue going on and actually you get a warmer side of his personality in this film you get kind of a as i say like a different adam sandler and i'm not against it you know i was a bit like all right yeah like maybe maybe he is more versatile than i initially considered uh but I, yeah I, I didn't mind it there were some really low bits in it for me there was the bit where lucid's dad's a fisherman and so she has a connection with men in fish, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> My dad was in the Navy. Maybe I've got a thing for men who are in the Navy. You know? I don't know. Like, <laughs> so I don't know. There was some funny bits in it. I, I, I actually did find it quite enjoyable. Should we talk about the soundtrack? Because it was a weird mixture of like reggae light cover versions, wasn't it? It was. I had an 80s theme. I guess that was kind of an extension of The Wedding Singer. Obviously, both, both actors were in. Thompson Twins, Hold Me Now, done by Wayne Wonder and Friday I'm in Love by The Cure done by some other band that a little bit jarring but they were good songs so yeah f full marks to the person that chose those, and, those tracks and the Adam Sandler token Adam Sandler 
written song that he writes for Lucy, which he does in like a lot of stuff. He because he he is a songwriter as well. I never knew that. I think they're quite. Good. He he sings. Like, he sings and plays guitar. And uh, that song that he sings in there, I actually, you know, it's quite heartwarming. It's just a sweet little ditty, isn't it? Lucy, do you think he's like write a word, take a third, like try and get onto the OST? Like, <laughs> he's like, I know, I'll craft a little ditty and then I'll get onto the OST. I actually think that he's uh, he's just like got his finger in all pies because he, he is it Happy Gilmore? His production company mm. is one that, I don't know if it made that film, but that's his production company and they've been making films for decades. So, music too. Mm. Yeah. I just wonder if people don't like him in movies would like him as a singer, as a you know as an artist a musical artist i i have loved him since little nicky like i just i that film is like iconic and forevermore i see him in that and i i just love him it's impossible not to think of american pie though isn't it and that scene you know which scene we're talking about <laughs> i mean they were together in the wedding singer am i right they were both in the wedding singer yeah i think they did a good job of putting them together because they have got on-screen chemistry kind of works and as you say lucy like in the wedding singer he sings i mean he's like he's there bopping along isn't he so i don't know yeah interesting that this came onto our list of films to review for i thought when i was i was watching it in a sort of like you know observational way and it's very creative and i also really love the like sea world stuff that they just thrown in there it's a really creative, it's directed really creatively. It's got loads of different areas when you really look at it. It's weird, isn't it? Because in some ways it, it's quite real, but in some ways it's not. Because, of, of course, you know, there's the story all to do with the, the crash that she's in, and that's why she's lost her memory. But there's also the caricatures, because there's that guy, is it Doug, the lisping guy, played by Sean Astin? Sean Astin. Yeah, who's in The Goonies. And that, that's kind of weird, because that's so over the top, that portrayal of, of someone, that it flits from serious to comical. Uh, that's hard to do in anything. It's hard to make somebody really laugh and then go, oh, actually, that's quite sad. And um, I really always give that a lot of respect, whether it's in music or art or film. It, it's, it's a hard thing to do. I think that I stops... I confess... It. Oh, go on. I probably fancied Sean Astin when he was... Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I leave now? We should do a spin-off, Phil, where we just rate Sean Astin. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I list was is quite a I Drew Barrymore in Charlie's Angels when oh, I was... Amazing. Like, nine or ten, I was... I was obsessed with her. Yeah, I fancied her in that. <laughs> I fancied her outfits. <laughs> you wanted her those outfits. Her and Cameron Diaz. Like, actually, Charlie's Angels was my, like, I think it was my, oh, yeah, no, I'm definitely a lesbian. Lucy, it's so funny you mentioned that because we had a whole conversation about Steve Guttenberg being that moment for myself and actually Philip Normal going, okay, there we go. Yeah, definitely go. I yeah. didn't, didn't get it at all. <laughs> <laughs> see, I was I more it. Tom Selleck, Tom Selleck fan back in those days. Oh, I days. see Tom Selleck. I mean, he still has the most perfect moustache in the known universe. So, <laughs> That's yeah, so obvious, absolutely. though, isn't it? It's such a cliche. I do watch Tom Hardy films and then think, well, maybe I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> you see, not with that accent in Taboo. Surely that's oh, an absolute... Yeah. Po- uh, <laughs> really? I have to turn it off, but otherwise, you know, it's really a bit funny. <laughs> One of the ultimate questions, apart from whether you think it's a flick or a flop, is, is it too schmaltzy? Because I think there's that cleverness that you're talking about, Lucy, and the, you know, the creative side of this, and also the fact that it doesn't go too comical. And in some ways, it does go over the top. Uh, it stops it being too schmaltzy, because I think a lot of films that, you know, you could probably put this film in the same category, you know, do, do become that really cringeworthy type of film but I don't think this does I think it was a flick I, I really I thought oh I have to watch 50 first dates and then I sat down with a coffee and was like this is this is a great film I'm really pleased <laughs> I like I said I feel like it was slightly ahead of its time and like you say it could have been schmaltzy looking at that that romance and things like that but it's a caricature of itself in parts which makes it I don't know, it made it great. Is it possible to do spoilers this far, this long after it went out? <laughs> we can do spoilers. I am a bit like, if someone goes, I haven't seen it, I am going to have to have an oh hun moment. The C, okay, I'm just going to do the spoiler. Put a spoiler flash on the screen, Phil. 
her father's painting the room because she paints it every day and he paints over it every day and gets the cake and I was just really touched by that. I was like, okay, it has like a tenderness to it, you know, and I was really touched by that. It did make me smile that they have to watch six, uh, The Sixth Sense every day, which is quite miserable. <laughs> but other than that, I was like, that's actually quite a tender moment, you know, when you, you know, she goes to bed and her father and her, and her brother go and do all, like basically get everything set up for the following day, you know, with like the pineapple and everything. I thought it was really tender. So for me, I agree. I, I kind of warm to this. So yeah, flick. Yeah, I'm with both of you. Um, like the soundtrack despite the fact you know there were radically different cover versions in some ways that's good though because again it's creative isn't it you know reggae light versions of the cure yeah i'm in <laughs> i never thought i'd say that but yeah <laughs> and also maybe you'll never say it again Phil. <laughs> maybe i never those will words will never <laughs> leave your lips ever again <laughs> but adam Sandler, you know i've never warmed to him on screen apart from i mean american pie i mean that's so farcical but you know, he's always tended to be quite typecast. And I think he showed, you know, his character showed a bit of depth. And I, I like that. So, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. I was won over. I mean, in a way, it's not, you know, the best film ever. But, yeah, it, I enjoy watching it. Like Lucy said, what, you know. What, what is the best film ever? Oh, I think it's got to be John Carpenter's Halloween. Sean is going to disagree with me on that one. I literally am like that. No. <laughs> what are you talking about? I hate horror, Lucy. Phil knows I hate horror. And so he's always like, ooh, should we watch this horror film? No, Phil, it's awful. And it's definitely not Halloween. You're mad. I have to agree with you there because I just don't get horror. I don't get it. Oh, we are kindred spirits, Lucy. You two are mm-hmm. never coming back on again. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to talk about horror, that's fine. Lucy's like breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I actually really enjoyed, like, I, I really enjoyed watching a film for, like, dissecting it. Lucy, you've got to tell us what happens with Lucy Spraggan in the next year, because lockdown is proving really difficult, especially now that it's extended even further. But have you got dates rescheduled? Are, are you in that sta- stage of changing everything now? Yeah. I've got some tour dates, but um, there's actually been a, a really huge opportunity that's come forward that wouldn't necessarily be something that I would have gone for a long ah. time ago, but I've just decided, let's do it. So you'll see what that is. Everyone will see what that is very Ooh, soon. Are you able to tell us anything about that or is it top secret? It's top secret. Oh, but I'm wow. sure you can imagine the vibe. Lucy, do you know what it is? I think we're weird. You know what, Phil? We had Crystal on recently from Drag Race. And Crystal was like, oh, I've got this massive bit of news, but I can't tell you. And we're like TMZ. We're like, we've got all the gossip. What is going on? (laughs) Everyone seems to have had like these big things, which is amazing. So congrats, Lucy, when you're ready to tell us. You can tell us offline if you like. (laughs) Um, I I will. I'll tell you when I can. It's so exciting. And it's so brilliant to have you on, Lucy. We wish you all the best with everything that's coming up. And hopefully soon we'll be able to see you physically. You can come to London or we can come and see you in Manchester. That's us inviting ourselves. (laughs) The shame of it. Come see the new house. I'm playing Manchester Pride. I think it's like my 14th or 13th year or something. So August Bank Holiday weekend. Amazing. Have fun. And Have it's lots totally of fun. sold out, hasn't it? Manchester Pride sold out in like two milliseconds. Like it was done. Like it, yeah, yeah um, it's done. I oh, well, Phil can get Phil can get it. I can get I can get us all tickets. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, best friends forever. Thanks <laughs> <laughs> for being a lesbian. <laughs> Sean, it's always good to see you. Like I say, like I said on the last one, you know, never a chore. It's always fun. When we do thank stuff, you so. love and yeah. Lucy thank you so much for being on it's been fab kindred so northern fun. spirits absolutely <laughs> thanks guys I'll speak like to you again very soon thanks for watching everyone see you next time <laughs> <laughs>